This is part one on the series of balance for people with Parkinson's. This is generally an overview of some of the contributing factors that affect your stability and your balance. As a physical therapist working with people with Parkinson's over the years, I have found that there is a pattern as far as why people tend to lose their balance. So I've listed the 10 most common areas that I have found repeatedly over the years and wanted to address each of them individually for this presentation. I'm going to be referring to many YouTube videos in this talk and I just want to show you how to easily access them. First what you want to do is get onto my website which this is what it looks like and it's Parkinson's pt.com. Once you get on the website, you're going to click on YouTube and that will bring you to my YouTube channel. Then you can access all the videos I refer to in this presentation. We're going to go through each item on this list starting with freezing of gait. Not everyone gets freezing, but when you do experience freezing, you want to know what you can do to make it less difficult with your walking. This video shows what you can do with freezing triggers and how to get out of them easier to minimize the length of time you're stuck in a freeze. Then the next video deals with turns. Now turns can be problematic regardless if you're freezing or not freezing, but it is more destabilizing if you do freeze. So this video takes a look on how to turn so that it's easier and more stable. One of the most common characteristic that changes with walking in Parkinson's is the length of your step. So regardless if you freeze or if you don't freeze, you're taking shorter steps. But with freezing, shorter steps can be food for freezing. So we want to lengthen the steps as much as you can in a natural way. And there's three avenues of approaching this. You can look at the video, Improving Walking with Attention Strategies. This video is very low tech. It's just a matter of you thinking about your walking. And there's different ways you can think about your walking and to encourage yourself to take bigger steps. And it shows you how to do that in that video. Then there's another video to help you take bigger steps, and that's improve walking with music or a metronome. So you're using your auditory system to help you take bigger steps. This is a little bit of a higher tech avenue because you need a headset or earbuds and you need music that you can listen to. So the higher tech option may be a little bit problematic for some individuals. Then there is taking bigger steps using visual cues. Visual cues are typically things that you see on the floor that you can step over. For example, like a piece of masking tape of different colors can help with visual cues to take that bigger step. Uh, the initial step of getting out of bed, you may want to use a piece of tape or even lay a sock flat on the ground as something to step over. And then you can also use like a thin rubber slats to put on the floor. The idea is to put something that's visual on the floor that you won't trip over because we don't want to add to problems. Typically people that are using a walker or have severe freezing would benefit from this video. Comprehensively, all the videos that are shown in this slide help you take bigger steps. You choose what works for you. And by taking bigger steps, that will help reduce your freezing, which then will help you become more stable. Now, taking bigger steps for other individuals might actually make them less stable. And that's where it's really advantageous to work with a physical therapist to see what your needs are and make sure that you end up stable no matter which way you go. The next item on the list is orthostatic hypotension or blood pressure drops. This is not uncommon in Parkinson's and there's many individuals who have this and don't know it, but it may be contributing to your unsteadiness. So this video goes into detail in terms of how you can figure out if you have this or not and what you can do about it so that you're more stable. 
Item number three that can affect your balance is having impaired postural reflexes. In other words, if you're losing your balance backward, you're unable to catch yourself. This video will teach you some compensatory maneuvers so you can be more stable when you're standing and reduce your fall risk. Item number four, muscle weakness from inactivity, is not specific to Parkinson's, but it does apply to people who have Parkinson's. If you look at this tower and how the wires, the guide wires are stabilizing this tower from tipping over one way or the other, this is how your muscles work in terms of helping you with your balance. If you don't exercise and you remain inactive, your muscles get progressively weaker and that's for everybody. That would be the same as if you're trying to support this tower with string instead of wire. It won't be as strong and it won't be able to keep it upright as well. So keeping your muscles strong is very important for your balance. Item number five, rushing or making quick movements can be very destabilizing and make you lose your balance. Whenever you walk, you have a forward momentum of your body. But when you make a turn, that momentum is now pulling you sideways. Now, if you're rushing, there these arrows get larger. You have a greater momentum going forward. So when you're rushing and you're turning, the momentum is pulling you even harder sideways. And that's why people, when they're rushing and turning, they're losing their balance sideways because of this momentum. So if you simply slow down, you can reduce the momentum and you can help yourself be more stable. Another thing you can do is strengthen your hip muscles that help stabilize you in the sideways direction, just like those guide wires we were looking at just a second ago. Item number six, your home environment can be a source of balance problems or falls. One common tripping hazard are throw rugs and should be eliminated if possible. Improving lighting, especially in stairwells, can be helpful since people with Parkinson's often have difficulty differentiating one step from the other. And then extension cords that can be in the path of where you're walking can also be a tripping hazard. Occupational therapists can come to your home and perform a home safety evaluation. What they do is they go into each room and see what areas can be improved on to make things safer for you and also easier for you, give you some tips. So that's one thing that I would recommend is if you're feeling unsteady in your home, you're having falls in your home, or having just difficulty maneuvering in your home, an occupational therapist can be a wealth of information of good advice. Item number seven, your shoes can be a source of balance problems. Take a look at your shoes. Put your shoes up on a counter so you can look at them eye level and see if the heels of your shoes are worn down on the outside because that can throw off your balance. Now, if you're somebody that tends to freeze or not lift your feet up enough so you're scuffing the floor when you're walking, you want to avoid deep ridges in your shoes because that can catch in the carpeting and if you're a freezer, that can make you freeze more. So avoiding deep ridges on your shoes is important. If you're a freezer and you have running shoes, there's one thing that you can do to reduce the catching of your feet while you're walking and help reduce your freezing. And that is to have a shoe repair person remove the sole of the front part of your shoe and replace it with leather. A term that's commonly used is a leather half sole. And the intention is to cover the ball part of your feet so that it extends to the beginning of the arch of your foot so you get full coverage. Item number eight, reduce steadiness when your Parkinson's meds have worn off. Your movement disorder neurologist is the best person to help tweak your medication so that it minimizes your off time, so that you're functioning at your best throughout the day. 
But even with their best efforts, there are still individuals who have off times and are less steady and don't function as well. Seeing physical therapists or occupational therapists who specialize in Parkinson's can help problem solve issues that occur during your off times so that you can manage more safely and reduce your risk of falls. Item number nine, misjudging distances. How many of you have almost missed the chair when you go to sit down or almost missed a step when you're going up or down the steps or going up and down a curb. If you're going down a curb, you catch your heel on the curb. That's all part of misjudging distances. So here's just one example. Somebody just turning and sitting a little bit prematurely and just barely getting on the edge of the seat. Since you can't fully rely on your depth perception, what you have to do more is rely on sense of touch. So when you go to sit down, make sure that before you sit down, you feel the chair touch against your leg. So here's just an example of that. And then you're for sure not going to miss the chair. This is just another example of misjudging distances going up the steps. And here we have a healthy person who doesn't have any problems with depth perception. They get a little bit closer to the step and when they step up to the first step, their foot's fully planted on the first step. Now somebody with Parkinson's will start going up the steps, but they start lifting their foot when it's further away from the step. So they have to take a larger step onto the first step, which is then their toes are just on the edge of the step, which can cause you to slip. Generally speaking, when misjudging distances, items appear closer than they actually are. So that can also throw off your balance when you're reaching for things. So you're standing and you're reaching for something and it's a little further than you thought it was. So you keep reaching further and then reaching that much further can throw your balance off. So it's important to be aware of that and work with your therapist, with your physical therapist or occupational therapist to try and maneuver around that a little bit better. Now for the last item, item number 10, the reluctance to using an assistive device when needed. Now this is a very sensitive topic. There's many people who really don't like using an assistive device. And the thing is, is that it tends to be counterproductive if you're not using an assist device when you need one for your balance and functionality. If you're not steady, you're more likely to sit more and walk less because it's safer. But what happens then is you become more deconditioned, which then feeds into becoming even less steady. Using a walker is very advantageous to maintaining your independence and maintaining your safety and preventing injury. So it, it's a win-win situation, except for psychologically, some people feel that they're doing worse if they have to use an assist device. But in the long term, you will be doing better because you'll maintain your independence and you'll maintain your activity so that you live a better quality of life. If you want to see more videos like this one, go to parkinsonspt.com and then click on the tab that says YouTube. Thank you.